morning, everybody, and welcome to Cameras and Coffee. And today, we're going to be talking about some very exciting news in the film industry, Cinestill's new at-home E6 development kit. There are three links in the video description. So because I saw this on the phoblographer, I, I felt it was appropriate to include a link to uh, that, that stub. There's nothing in that piece that you can't find in the actual Cinestill press release, which is the second link. And then the third link is a PDF file, which is a PDF of Cinestill's um, uh, package insert for, for this new item. So let's take a quick look here at the press release. Okay, so the, with typical E6 development, it's a six step process with six different baths that it goes into. And um, let's see, so, but this cuts it down to three by combining some of the ingredients and processes. And the press release has a boatload of really fantastic sample photos by three different photographers, some of which are, are very good. And what this kit does is it has an initial has an initial bath and then a second bath, which is the um, color and reversal bath. And then the bleacher and fixer is the third bath. The first bath has three different options, dynamic chrome, daylight chrome, and tungsten chrome, they're calling them. So the tungsten chrome allows you to shoot daylight balanced film under tungsten light with no change to your ISO and, with, um, and it will come out being correctly balanced. So if you were to take a typical daylight slide film like E100, specifically is the one they talk about here, and expose it under tungsten light, you'd need to add two stops of light. You'd have to expose it as 25 ISO, according to Kodak's data sheet. And then everything would turn out very orange, unless you used a color correction filter in front of your lens. This, first, this, this bath for tungsten eliminates the ISO loss, so you can still shoot it at 100 under tungsten, and it eliminates the need for that color correction filter. Those are two huge steps. Uh, and it makes me wonder if you could use it to push the film under daylight conditions and then color correct in post or use filters. So if you were shooting under daylight, could you shoot it at 400 ISO and then just deal with the color shift? I'm not sure. I think that would make it a very, very blue image if you tried that. Uh, the Daylight Chrome is, which one is it? Here it is. The Daylight Chrome is the standard neutral tone 5500 Kelvin first developer. And then the Dynamic Chrome is a warm tone developer. I gotta say the sample images from Dynamic Chrome make it look like it's real, really the best option of the three which according to Cinestill renders approximately nine plus stops of usable dynamic range, which means that in your slide images, you're gonna be able to have um, an, an, a nine exposure value range. So that's a lot. That, that's, that's like a, a standard color negative film, maybe a skosh better than that. It's also better than digital sensors. Most digital sensors can provide. Digital sensors are generally in the seven to 10 range. Um, when digital sensors are, sensors are rated, I think that saying 10, it's a little bit of marketing truth. Um, usually I found digital sensors to be in the six to seven, maybe eight range. Marketing truth, marketing truth by the way, like marketing is something for camera related companies need to do better. It's always been abysmal. But marketing truth is like, it's like clogging your buddy's toilet, right? And instead of running out and saying, I've clogged your toilet, we need to fix it, and you're probably going to lose your security deposit. It's strolling out and saying, I just gave you a chunky bidet. So the exact same thing happened, it's just how you describe it. 
And so the marketing truth of digital sensors is always a little bit exaggerated in terms of sensor capability. Uh, at any rate, nine plus stops in the, the sample photos, granted, I'm just looking at them on my cell phone, uh, look like they have the potential to actually deliver that too. So looking at the results here, I, oh yeah, I cannot wait to try this. This is going to be a lot of fun to use. So the next thing let's do is if you have the product, the package in insert open, we're going to dig into this and we're going to understand exactly what the package insert is telling us about this product. And then I'm going to, uh, but before, and then after that, I'm going to hammer on Cinestill for the terrible name that they have given this product. All right, so Cinestill, creative slide, three bath process. So you know, let me grab the whiteboard so we can do some math here. All right, so if we look at the package insert, it tells us that the solution capacities, I'm going to do everything in 35 millimeter because the majority of you, if you're looking at this to shoot Ektachrome 100 or Fuji Chrome, Fuji, the Fuji slide films, are probably going to be shooting 36 exposure, 35 millimeter film. So the first bath of all three of them can handle eight rolls of 36 exposure. The second bath can handle 16, and the third bath can handle 24. So what we're going to do with that information is we're going to help you plan how to most efficiently use this chemistry if you want to buy it. Now we're going to combine this in just a minute with a second table that provides the, use, the, the shelf life of each of the different chemistries. So your first bath chemistry will last for eight rolls, second will last 16, third will last 24. Now if we go over to the, yeah, so if we go over to the bottom left part of the foldout, what we can see is that after you, there's, there's mixing instructions for each of the different baths. And what we can see is that after you mix the first one, it's good for two to six weeks before as stock solution before you have to pitch it. Then the second one is good for 6 to 12. We do not have And the third one is good for 2 to 4 months, which is 8 to 16. Okay, so according to the package insert, 8 rolls, 16, 24. 2 to 6 weeks, 6 to 12, 8 to 16. So what we can do with this data is plan how you're going to use this. The other thing we can do is figure out what kind of quantities you need and what timelines you need to make the most of the chemistry. So first thing we need to do is figure out how much chemistry you, we need to buy of each to use all of it evenly. 24, 16, and 8 all have a mul common multiplier of 8. So we can figure out the lowest common denominator from that. It's going to be 48. 24 times 2 is 48. 16 times 3 is 48. 8 times 6 is 48. So if you make enough, if you, if you were to buy enough chemistry to make two batches of this, three of this, and six of this, you could use all of your chemistry evenly. Okay. So that also tells us that if you can do eight here, and you're doing, so that tells you you can do 48 rolls of film. So if you were really dedicated to doing this, if you bought 48 rolls of E100 35 millimeter at, with 36 exposures and enough chemistry to develop it all, you'd have the exact amount of need, needed to develop all your chemistry, all your film at home with no excess. So the other thing is the, the pot life of the stock solutions. What this means is that once you mix up the stock solution, which is the concentrated chemistry that comes with the kit with some water, this will last two to six weeks, six to 12 and eight to 16. Okay, so what you could do is if you had this, you could mix it up and you could say in the next two weeks, I've got to shoot eight rolls of film. If you did that three times, that's your six right there. 
and then you would be within this range here. So if you were to shoot uh, four rolls of film a week for as long as you had that 48, roll, uh, 48 rolls of film worth of chemistry, which is eight weeks, you would be able to use all of this effectively. You could shoot at a slightly slower pace. Realistically, as long as you just developed for a week, you could shoot two every other week. But that works out pretty nicely. If you're going to be seriously into shooting slide film, you can shoot a lot of slide film. So now let's talk about the economics of this. And does it actually make financial sense? So the kits are right now $39. According to the website, it looks like my best guess is that they're going to be around 42 uh, normally because it looks like the $39 price is a promotion. And so for $39, what you get is enough to develop 16 rolls. And what I don't understand about that is that this third bath is supposed to be good for 24. And I thought that the, for 39, you're getting all three baths. It looks like it from the, from the website. So at any rate, um, for $39, looks like you can develop eight rolls of film from start to finish, okay? So if that is correct, no, I take that back. For $39, it says you can develop 16 rolls from start to finish. All right, so let's do some math for this. Let's figure out if it makes financial sense. I'm pretty sure it does. There are two options you can buy on the website right now. There's the 16 plus roll kit and then there's the 32 plus roll kit. The 16 roll kit is $39 and the um, 32 roll kit is 74. Now those look like they're sale prices. It looks like they're actually 42 and 85 respectively. It looks like they're, they're temporarily on sale. But as of today, as I'm filming this, those are the prices, so those are the numbers we're gonna use. So if we do 39 divided by 16, that's $2.44 per roll to develop. Now if we do 74 divided by 32, that's $2.31 per uh, per roll, okay? This assumes, of course, that this $39 is all three pieces of chemistry. I think it is, but the website is not super clear on what you get when you order, at least not that I could decipher so far. If I'm missing something, let me know if it, if it states it blatantly right there. This kind of goes to part of my problem with the way this is being marketed is that there are some things here that are not clear and not well done and we'll get to that in a few minutes so how much does it cost to have film e6 developed at a lab what we'll do is i'm going to go up and look at my photo lab that i normally use old school photo lab and let's find out so lab services, 35 millimeter, E6. And now we're gonna assume that you're going to digitize these at home like I do, um, and that it's not gonna be cut. And that is gonna make it, come on, $16 per roll. Okay, so realistically, you're looking at saving $14 and change every time you develop a roll with this kit, assuming that the kit that you purchase does in fact come with everything that you need to, 
to do those 16 rolls. And like I said, what I'm, what I'm really, really unclear on is if that 16 roll for $39 is just the developer or if it's all three baths. So because what it, when, you, when you purchase this, when you uh, order it, it says slide chemistry kit dynamic chrome D9 is what it's set on for me. 1,000 milliliter quart kit, 16 plus rolls. But is it just the first bath? I don't know. Because there's also then the option for the 321 chemical reuse kit, which I'm not sure if that's like developer replenisher. If it's replenisher, replenisher doesn't actually, it's good for lab settings where you're producing bulk, but using replenisher at home will degrade your quality. Replenisher doesn't, it doesn't, it extends the usable life of the developer. It doesn't extend the usable quality image generating life of developer. So, um, so anyway, so I'm assuming that the, that the, the 1,000 milliliter 16 roll kits come with everything. If you have a better insight into that, please let me know. The, next, the, the last thing I want to talk about with this is just the, the terrible name. Sinistil is calling this CS6. Real quick show of hands, does anybody think that calling this product CS6 will have some problems? Okay, so I don't think Cinestill is going to get sued by Adobe. I don't for trademark infringement. They're different products. That's not the issue. The issue is that it's going to get killed in search results. If somebody goes up and they want to look for CS6 film, there's all kinds of search results for um, add-ins and stuff that you can buy or download for CS6 to make your digital images look like film. CS6 is still a ubiquitous photo editing product. In um, much, I still use CS6. And it's not just photo editing. It's across the creative spectrum. Illustrator, InDesign, the whole suite of, of other products use CS6 um, that, that, that are version CS6, use that as part of their name. So, and that's those are established products, which means it's going to be harder for a new product to rise to the top of that list. What if, now I understand they wanted to, I, I have to imagine, keep the, the CS as part of Cinestill, and that's, that's logical branding. You want to keep your name in there. What if they had named it something a little bit like this. You know, my handwriting is awful. What if it had been Cine 6, C-I-N like Cine still, capital E6. That tells you what it is. It's slide film, because that's the standard designation, and you could use the font there to tie it all in together. What if you wanted to give it a slightly standout look? Imagine this, now the, the three colors of the different baths are gray, red, and black. What if you had like some, I don't have much room here, but you had some boxes here like a, a red box coming up and down from the bottom of it. Pretend this one is gray because I don't have a gray marker. And then a black one. And then that would tie in with the colors of your uh, of your packaging and it would represent the three different baths that go into the process of making this so I mean were it up to me I would have suggested at minimum I would have suggested that and and it is kind of disappointing that either no one suggested that naming this CS6 would suppress it in search results and not be a good idea or that someone did suggest it, and someone higher in the food chain did not listen to them. Both of those are failures, quite frankly. And I'm saying that because when I went looking for this last night to dig into it, it wasn't easy. Searching for slide CS6 and other terms, slide developing CS6, did not return 
the results that had to do with this product. So it took me three Google search terms, I forget what they all were, to find the actual product page. I know I could have just gone to Cinestill's website and found it from there, but I didn't want to because I wanted to see if my theory that this is a terrible name held water, and it does. Now, all that said, super exciting product. The images look like they're going to be absolutely fantastic from it. And it's not just that they had good photographers. The, the dynamic range and the coloration coming out of this chemistry is warmer than what I see out of um, the E100 I get back from the lab. So I cannot wait till I'm at a point where I can test all three of these and a lab-developed E100 four rolls of film taken of the exact same subjects. That's going to be a fun experiment when I can do that. So at any rate, uh, that is today's photography news to talk about and some marketing stuff to harp on. Awesome, awesome product, uh, I, I hope, from Cinestill. I'm really looking forward to when I get a chance to use it, and I am really excited that Cinestill, which has been, by and large, an incredibly innovative film company since their first product, is really putting time and effort into continuing to advance their product line and proving that they are actually a legitimate company and not just a one-off product. They're not just a Kickstarter campaign. They have really become a mature and developed and really interesting company with re a really nice product offering. So kudos to them for doing an awesome job on that. Well, thank you everybody very much for watching. And let me know what you are thinking about with the uh, Cine Still CS6 at home slide processing kit, whether or not you're looking forward to using it and your thoughts on that. And I will see you guys in the comments section.